And welcome to SLU's latest Clubhouse Clip. Uh, I'm Eric Gettleman coming to you live from Smoky Hollow Studios at SLU HQ in uh, Washington, Connecticut. And tonight I'm going to be joined by Will Gator in the UK. And today we're going to be talking about a, a subject that's very central to all the navigation uh, that comes around with the night sky. And it's, it's, a very, it's a very interesting star. And it is the North Star. Uh, we have a lot to talk about as to how it's used uh, just in astronomy culture, in uh, cultural culture, in history, uh, what's been done with it, and there's there's a lot to talk about. So uh, I, without further ado, I'd like to bring in uh, Will Gator, who's, yes, joining me tonight. Uh, welcome, Will. Uh, thanks for <laughs> joining me yesterday with an amazing Ly Lyrid meteor shower and today with Polaris. Lots of stuff to talk about. Yeah, it's been a really busy week for astronomy, hasn't it? In the UK here, we've actually had a, a week of clear skies. So, yeah, it's pretty tiring, all this astronomy. There's so much to see. <laughs> right. It's 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 uh, pretty rare huh, at, at this time of year to have clear skies over there. It's pretty rare to have clear skies. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, um, I'm enjoying it. I really am, honestly. I'm not complaining. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I, we, we've been having dreary, crazy rain over here, which is so wonderful that we have the, these clear skies over in the Canary Islands. They've been very consistently clear lately, which has been so wonderful. And so that's that's something that we can uh, take advantage of a bunch right now. Uh, it's it's uh, absolutely magnificent stuff. And so uh, there is one tech thing that I should look into really quick, but while I'm doing that, Will, could you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at in the all sky here and how it can maybe uh, transition into sort of navigation with Polaris? Yeah, well, I think, I think really you, you, you put, put the nail on the head when you sort of said about Polaris being that object that everything's centered around. And, and that's certainly true in the Northern hemisphere. Polaris marks, or at least it's very close to a point it's very important in astronomy, and that's known as the North Celestial Pole. 
So the North Celestial Pole is essentially, it's the point on what we call the celestial sphere, this imaginary uh, sphere that we map the stars onto. And the North Celestial Pole is essentially where the Earth's axis of rotation intercepts that sphere. And that point is very, very close, about 40 arc minutes away from Polaris. And so what that means, well, what does it mean? It means that if you watch the night sky over the course of a few hours, you'll notice that the stars move slowly across the sky. They're rotating, or at least they appear to rotate. In fact, you just saw the live all sky image there update and saw that all the stars shifted a little bit down uh, towards the right. Now, what's happening there is not actually the stars themselves moving, of course. What you're seeing is that the Earth is rotating underneath them. Uh, and this rotation axis, as I said earlier, that points uh, up to the North Celestial Pole. And for us in the Northern Hemisphere, Polaris, the brightest star in the constellation of Ursa Minor, that is very close to it. As I said earlier, about 40 arc minutes. Now, for people in the Southern Hemisphere, well, they don't really have one that that's, that's that close. There's Sigma Octantis, but it's about, well, it's actually over a degree uh, away from the southern celestial pole. That's where the, the, the bottom, if you like, the, the southern sort of pole meets the celestial sphere. So we're quite lucky here in the northern hemisphere, Eric, actually, to have Polaris so close to that point, that, that uh, sort of axis of rotation as it is. Yeah, and saying axis of rotation, I think that's a great uh, transition to a really beautiful image that you, you shared with me earlier today that I think just so perfectly represents what it is that makes Polaris so special. And, and here it is, uh, a beautiful uh, image uh, via the astronomer Will Gator. Like this is, uh, it's, it's, Polaris is that unique one that you can see. It's, it's just everything around it is rotating. Yeah, yeah, and you can see you can see that it's not quite exactly at that sort of center of rotation. As I said, it's about forty arc minutes, and this is the sort of picture uh, that you can take actually with you know just a DSLR camera. You don't need a fancy tracking mount or anything like this. Just set the wide angle lens pointing in the direction uh, of well, you can see there. There's the plow just up by your head, or the Big Dipper in America, just by your head there, uh, Eric. Um, put your wide angle lens in that direction and open the shutter for 30 seconds a minute and you will see this over time, these stars move around. And actually what this picture is, is a collection of, I think it was maybe 10 or 20 uh, two minute exposures. And once you add them together, you really do see this motion um, around the North Celestial Pole. It's a beautiful, beautiful demonstration really, a very simple demonstration of that thing that we all notice as astronomers um, on a clear night is that the stars make this wonderful slow move across the sky. And it really speaks toward the consistency of Polaris and how uh, it, people have relied on it really throughout history. Like if, if you uh, are, are sailing on the ocean, you don't have any other technology or gear with you, this will be able to tell you where you are sort of in the, in the north-south direction. Uh, that, it, that's, uh, that star depends the location of that star, uh, its altitude, uh, depends on where you are in, in latitude. And so uh, people can use that in terms of navigation and, and to figure out where they are in the world and where they are in terms of the cardinal directions. It's, it's a very, uh, very significant star that you can really take advantage of. And uh, it, it's, it's great in terms of uh, setting up and training telescopes too, right? Absolutely, yeah. It's. Um, I mean, I remember first learning about the Polaris, or then the North Star, when I was in Cub Scouts when I was very little, and we used that for sort of navigation, as you say. But as astronomers, we use it because it is that star that's very close to that North Celestial Pole. Now, I said earlier that the stars move slowly over the course of a, a few hours, or in fact, that motion you can you can see if you have a telescope and just point it at a star, and you'll see it drift out of the field of view. Well, if you're trying to take pictures of the stars or perhaps you just want to have your telescope tracking the night sky, what you need to do is align your telescope pretty much if you, only if it's an equatorial mounted telescope. Um, you need to align it to that rotation axis of the Earth. So equatorial telescopes, basically, they have one axis one basic sort of um, part of the telescope that's aligned perpendicular, not perpendicular, parallel. Um, to the axis of rotation of the Earth. And, and so Polaris allows you to do that because often in the uh, telescope, you have a little tiny telescope in itself that's only job is to look at Polaris or at least the region around Polaris. And you have a little reticule usually 
um, to a line and you can work out from different transit times of Polaris so where Polaris will be at a very specific time you can work out where it should be and then align that reticule to where Polaris is in your little tiny viewing telescope that we call a poloscope uh, and then once you've got that all aligned your telescope should then be perfectly aligned um, in parallel to the rotation axis of the Earth. And what that means is that as those stars make that movement, if you move in one axi, axis um, or, or have a, a motor to do that for you, then you won't need to move the telescope. It will just follow the sky uh, and you can just make adjustments as you want to wander around the sky. So, yeah, it's a very important star in that respect for amateur astronomers. Oh, yeah, sounds sounds like it. And it just, <laughs> I mean, I... I'll... I've just been gazing at this picture. It just it really uh, brings to mind like the the heart of the matter there. That it's it's that stationary thing on which you can use to venture off into different locations. And it's it's been so important to uh, us as astronomers and in terms of understanding you know the rotation of our Earth. It's it's such a significant and telling star, and it's been used throughout history as well. Like uh, uh, it was something that I I learned. Back in uh, elementary school, that this was uh, uh, in, in the United States uh, when uh, slavery was an issue, slaves that were escaping from the southern region to the northern region would use the northern star to find their location. They didn't have maps with them, but they could look mm -hmm. up and they could look at the night sky and see where the north star was, and that way they could find their direction. And that they knew they needed to go north, and this could help them go north. And so this is, is such a significant star on so many different levels. It, it has a, a mm -hmm. lot of historical and cultural significance to it. And it uh, really uh, a lot of fun. Um, do you have a preference for uh, Polaris or the North Star? Is 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 are you in one camp or the other? Will I generally say Polaris? But that's just I guess what I've uh, learned over the years. Um, that's uh, you know, the North Star. You know the Pole Star. All these names are I I kind of use them interchangeably, really. Yeah, and what, well, one thing that's I think interesting is that Polaris gives it, it gives it more of a unique significance to it than North Star maybe necessarily because it won't always be the North Star will it it, it then there was it wasn't always the North Star and that we have a little bit of uh, uh, the and it's, it's not necessarily true north like you were mentioning earlier that it's a little bit offset and so there's this transience to it this impermanence and it's going to be replaced it's going to be usurped and it, it, it usurped another star earlier on I believe it was a, a a star in the constellation Draco a few thousand years ago Thuban which was the the previous North Star, uh, and there'll be another North Star after that as well. That's right, yeah. So um, if you stick around for a few thousands of years, um, your North Star, you know, you won't have Polaris uh, at the North Celestial Pole because of the way the Earth's axis essentially wobbles. We call it the precession of the equinoxes, which is just really a fancy name for essentially a wobble over time, a little bit like a sort of spinning plate. You know, as a, a, if you sort of very carefully drop a plate and it spins and wobbles, or maybe you had one of those little gyroscope toys that as it spins, it sort of moves around like that. If you've got a pen and it sort of moves around uh, like that, that's what's happening to the axis of rotation of the Earth very slowly over time. So I think it's in something like, is it 12,000 years or 10,000 years? Um, it's going to be nice. quite a way away from the star Deneb, and it's going to move around. It'll be closer to Vega. So, you know, it, Polaris is not always going to be the, the pole star. So um, if you're a time traveler, particularly if you're watching this show coming back from the future, um, you know, Good luck because your amateur astronomy, you're setting up your telescope, is going to be an absolute nightmare. Oh, they're going to have to learn it all from square one without uh, knowing mm -hmm. how to do it with Polaris, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Polaris is 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 so significant now because it's the North Star for us now, and it has been for thousands and thousands of years, and so it's played such an important role in 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 lots of different cultures. And I I was just looking into recently how. Um, the North Star is portrayed in different cultures, and it, it does have um, a lot of significance and lore to it. Like it, the the Navajo uh, Indians actually call it, I believe, the igniter of the revolving ones. I found this one really fascinating because wow. you see the Polaris, and then you see the sky rotating around it. Um, and so it sort of speaks toward the revolving ones. But in particular, the revolving ones in this case are the Big Dipper, which is the, the male revolving one, and then you have Cassiopeia, which is the female revolving one. And so these two mm -hmm. constellations represent a Navajo couple that, uh, and, and in the center is the flame, Polaris. 
Polaris ignites these constellations so that they can be bright and so that they can be seen. And so that's sort of it, how the, the, the Navajo lore deals with this uh, central star. And it, there, there's lots of uh, different uh, cultures that have different interpretations of it. And it's just it's so fascinating to read about. And then you have uh, other cultures which are very straightforward about it, like uh, the, the Japanese called the uh, North Star Hokyokuse, which uh, if you uh, segment the different meanings of the different syllables in there, you have North, and then you have Polar, and then you have Star. So it's it's, yeah. it's just <laughs> it's, it's it's really really directly straightforward to what you're uh, what you could what you would expect when you're describing the star and of course yeah we have North Star as well uh, in in English and so uh, mm -hmm. if if the North Star is something that is interesting to you it's fascinating to you there there's so much to read about it there's there's uh, lots of different cultures that interpret it in different ways and uh, as you know as a clubhouse as a community of astronomers. We'd love to hear about your own interpretations or your own uh, reactions or feelings or history with Polaris. Like if, if you have uh, a story you'd like to tell us, you know, comment in the, in the live show section. And, and we'd love to have a conversation about it uh, because, a, again, these are uh, shows are, are, are for you and uh, for the topics that you're interested in. And we'd love to hear if you have a particular interest in this one. And, of course, if you have other topics that you'd like to hear about as well, uh, please do suggest them. Uh, and... You know, as as we're talking about sort of this possibility here, uh, of course, I'd like to welcome any uh, new members who have potentially uh, joined us over the the last couple of days from the shows. It's always a lot of fun to get a a lot of new faces in the clubhouse, and so uh, to give you a little potential tour of what you can see here, uh, there there's a lot of stuff to do, and of course, there's shows. There's going to be live shows going on all the time, and uh, we also have lots of different uh, things that are popping up that community members are are doing. And uh, like very recently, we had a night of discovery where everybody was just working together to look at different uh, Herschel objects. And uh, so this was something that a group of people were passionate about, and they, they went ahead and did it. And so if there's something that you have a particular passion about, you know, let, let us know. Let the community know, and you might find other people that are going to resonate on that same frequency, that are going to really enjoy what you, what you want to explore in the universe. And we have a lot of tools here that can allow you to do that. Uh, so, yeah, thank you for, for joining, Slu, or if you've been here for a while, thank you for sticking around. It's, it's so much fun to really be able to interact with you guys all the time. And so there, there's lots more shows that you can expect to have here. Uh, so, so, yeah, thank you again. And uh, I was wondering, Will, do you have any sort of last thoughts about Polaris that you'd like to leave us with? Uh, lo lots of stuff to say about this star, yeah. but uh, it resonates can, with can, everybody a little different. Can you go back to the uh, live all sky view, if you can, Eric? Because oh, I think sure, yeah. the, the 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 one thing um the one thing that perhaps a, maybe a final thought to think about is is use Polaris as that sort of pointer to not just find you the north, but maybe just find it as a way to sort of explore the night sky. Because once you find sort of the constellations Ursa Minor and Ursa Major, particularly that very bright grouping of stars that you can see just to the left of your um little sort of box there, Eric that is the plow or the big dipper uh and and that's a great staging post for exploring the sky there you go yeah perfect so you've got the handle of the plow there you can see that arcs round to that very bright star that's just in the sort of uh, bottom third of the screen that's the star arcturus at the bottom of the constellation of Bootes, the herdsman you can see next to that there's a little bowl shape that's corona borealis that's a lovely constellation and then following up along there you've got hercules the keystone of hercules up there and then in the direction that your little hand is going eric there um that's the, that's uh, lyra there so that is a vega the bright star vega there and so you know use the use polaris use the the bright constellations around it as a staging post that would be my sort of final thought to sort of explore the sky because you know, when you get into astronomy, it can be a little bit daunting. You know, you go out there on a clear night, and particularly if you live in a very dark place, the sheer number of stars can be a little bit overwhelming. So use Polaris in the way that astronomers have used it for centuries and as, as a way to get your bearings uh, and explore the sky. Oh, yeah, wonderful sentiment. I mean, really, Polaris is fundamental, and you can start from the fundamentals up, and it gives you such a great foundation to explore, explore the universe, as, as you as you said. Uh, so yeah, this is, this is one, one portion of the universe and we have many more to go as we wander around the cosmos from day to day, from week to week. And so uh, thank you so much again for uh, being with us, SLU members, and, and we will be back very soon. Uh, so, so keep looking up and thank you. This has been uh, Eric and Will for SLU. Good night.
and welcome to SLU's latest Clubhouse Clip. Uh, I'm Eric Edelman. Come Thank you. 